Uh, George, it's great to yes. see you. Uh, praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, Brother Fred. Okay. The title of the message tonight is Celebrating God's Goodness. He is so good beyond words. Uh, and it's just wonderful to think about his goodness and to remind ourselves we serve a good God. Uh, a lot of people uh, think that he's a harsh God because they don't really know him. They don't understand his nature or the way or his ways. Uh, but we're going to see just to begin with that he uh, is good. And, and the scriptures are just full of uh, talking about his goodness. And what I want you to think about tonight is that God poured out his goodness. And all along, uh, from, from the beginning of the Bible, Bible uh, all the way through Revelation, you see that he is good, that he's pouring out his goodness. And that it was even reaffirmed with Jesus in John 10.10. 10. He said, I've come that you might have a life and a life more abundantly. So God brings wonderful blessings to all of us, uh, sinners or saints. He, he's still a good God to all. He, his sun shines yeah. on all of us. His rain falls on all of us. He's a good, good God. And, and uh, when he was uh, talking to Moses uh, in, uh, early on in the books of uh, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and, and Deuteronomy, he's, he's laying out the law to him, but he's saying, I, I want to have feast, and, and I'm going to bless you with abundant harvests, and when you bring in those harvests, I, I have a time set aside for you to celebrate the, the abundance that I have provided for you. So we'll see in a moment that there are are a number of feasts and, and uh, they're important times to uh, that God has set apart uh, to meet with all of us because we, as Sherry said, we're all a part of the body of Christ, Amen. the family, family of, God. of God, and that's so so important. We're members of the family of God. He's pouring out His uh, blessings upon us with the and in the natural. Uh, in the early days of uh, the Old Testament, it was talking about harvests of grains and, and things like that. But we actually see it's a really a spiritual harvest and, and, and we're just reaping wonderful benefits and they all come through Jesus Christ. Uh, mm -hmm. But it was laid out that God uh, wanted to set some times appointed for us to, to meet with us. Uh, they're called holy times, but uh, mm -hmm. holy also means set apart. So these are times that God sets apart to meet with his people. And, and the Israelites uh, throughout the Old Testament, and I suppose even today, that they are uh, celebrating when they receive those abundant harvests, then they mm -hmm. take time have an extravagant uh, festival yeah. and feast with the Lord. It's all about the presence of the Lord. Uh, but it's at times that he set up. It wasn't times that uh, the nation of Israel set up. These were God's appointed times uh, to meet with his people. And, and those times are still ongoing and we can mm -hmm. participate because he has uh, a his calendar marked with a date for you uh, that you can spend time with him. And we're in this incredible time of a new year right, uh, in the Hebrew uh, calendar. And it uh, began um, September the 16th and 17th. And that was a feast of uh, tabernacle. We'll talk about these. No, more. feast of trumpets. Uh, I'm sorry, of trumpets. We'll talk about these more in a minute. And then, and then in a, a week on uh Next Monday, the 25th, there will be the Day of Atonement. We're also living right now in seven days of awe, which means it's time to reflect on our life and what mm -hmm. God has done for us. It's uh, seven day, uh, 10 days of repentance. And then we go into uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, and that runs from this year, from September the 30th through um, October, October the, 6th. the 6th. Now, 
what I want you to know that we're in a new year. It's a new season. It's a new time. And we all need to be in the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That uh, The bottom line for this message today is we need to be in his presence. He has some incredible mm -hmm. things planned for you and for the year ahead and for the things ahead. But we've got to spend time with him to find out what they are. We don't want to miss uh, our visitation, our time to visit with with the Lord. And of course, we have uh, that access uh, to the Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ and all that he provided uh, by his uh, death, burial, and resurrection. And uh, uh, that it's important for us to understand how all of these things work, work together. together. Um, and, and so I want to start with just talking about the goodness of God. And I have several uh, scriptures from the book of Psalm that just remind us God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's been good to you. Hallelujah. He's been good to me. He's been good to all of us. Hallelujah. We, we can't complain. He mm -hmm. is good. Go ahead and read well, some of these verses. I'm going to read the verses in just a moment, but I have a personal experience uh, about um, how important it is to know about God's goodness. Uh, we were uh, in a service uh, where we uh, we traveled uh, about 45 minutes to get there every service. And we did that three times a week for 11 years uh, to learn the ministry, to be brought up and trained in the ministry. And after one of the services, um, our daughter, Amy Elizabeth, was very young. She was just a... Uh, maybe four years old, and they were all the children were out in the front of the of the church building, and they were playing and running. And she tripped over this this pipe that was in the ground, and she cut the the underneath her chin. She cut it wide open, and it was it was bleeding and bleeding. And and all I could do was pick her up. And I sat down on the steps of that church building and all that would come out of my mouth was the song, God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, he's so good to me. And all that time I was singing, I had my hand uh, on that underneath her chin and all of a sudden the bleeding stopped and she stopped crying and there was peace there and she doesn't even have a scar uh, from that uh, cut that was underneath her underneath her chin and so at that point uh, I activated the goodness of God and and he and he was there to pour out his goodness in see, Psalms. See when we proclaim his goodness, he it's an invitation yeah. for him to come in. Yes, and be present presence, there to be present with us as we proclaim his goodness. That's what we're going to do tonight. You know, this is not just a meeting. I want to just mm -hmm. uh, say this aside that this is not just a meeting. This is a place where God. Uh, abides with all of us. Yes. When we come together like this, he comes and joins us. He comes us. and joins us. Uh, mm -hmm. He's he's not a god who's far off. He's right here in our midst. Yes. And we're and the very thing we're teaching is we're going to start doing right here. We're going to begin proclaiming His goodness. Yeah, and we're going to proclaim it from the scriptures. And uh, Sherry's going to read these scriptures, and and that's just going to invite His presence. Amen. And I believe that. Uh, if you uh, expect it, he's going to show up in Hallelujah. your Hallelujah. life and in your uh, situation. Amen. He's going to bring peace and he's going to bring prosperity because uh, wherever he goes, he shows up. Uh, that's what he what he brings. His his peace, his Amen. presence, his uh, prosperity. And it, it's an abundant time. Okay. Psalms 25, 8. The Lord is good and upright. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. Psalms 27, 13. I certainly believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord 
in the land of the living. Okay, so this is not, oh, in the sweet by and by. This is not waiting until you get to heaven. We're going to see it here on earth yes. when we're yes. living. While we're still alive, he's going to show his goodness to you now Hallelujah. in this life. It's not about uh, an afterlife or anything like that. He, he shows his goodness to you in the land of the living. As long as you're living, you're going to be walking in Amen. his goodness. Amen. In Psalms 31, 19, how abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all on those who take refuge in you. So a lot of the translations right here say your goodness is great. Great mm -hmm. goodness. Okay, that's good. But I like this translation. This was from the New International Version because it shows, oh, there's a lot of his goodness. A lot of it. Abundant, not just, abundant. It's not just a little, but it's an abundant amount. Hallelujah. It's a, it's a great amount of his goodness. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory. Psalms 34, 8. Now, I love this one. Taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the person who takes refuge in him. Okay, so it says we're supposed to do something. We're supposed to be tasting the Lord and seeing that he is good. We need to be looking for his goodness. You, you need to be expecting his goodness, even tonight and yeah. in the days ahead. Uh, this is, see, this is a new year. He yes. wants to do new Hallelujah. things in your life. Psalms 119, verse 68. You are good. And you do good. Woo, that's good. And you teach me your statutes. Hallelujah. He is good and he does good. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So it's not just that he is good. I, I like the part he does good. He does good. And this uh, next verse is one I love too. Psalm 84, 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord gives grace and he gives glory. He withholds no good thing from those who walk with integrity. Oh, hallelujah. So hallelujah. What he, he's hallelujah. not going to hold back good things. You need good things. He's not going to hold it back. He's mm. got it. He That's all he has is good things. And he's going to give you good things. And, and you know, a lot of people get confused and they think he gives evil, but he doesn't have evil. He just has good. Yeah. He is good. Everything about him is good. You, you can look through him. Uh, for eternity, and you'll never see a shadow, even the slightest amount of anything evil. He is good through and through, and he does good. And if you need good, he will not withhold it from you. He's not going to keep it back. He has a heart to give. He so loved the world, world that he gave his, his own, best, yes. which was his only begotten son. Amen. Okay. Then let's I want, go to I, the New Testament. Okay. Well, I will go there in just a moment, but I want to talk about the word integrity here. The word integrity is is a word that the Lord pays attention to. And it part of it means honesty and truthful. But, but part of it means that if you give your word, you're going to complete your word. If you say, yes, I'll be at the meeting tomorrow night and you don't show up, then that's not integrity. Integrity is that you follow through with what you say that you're going to do. And uh, and so I believe that, that he says he withholds no good thing from those who walk in truth, that those who walk in integrity that's he's he's going to give all of his goodness uh to you oh, and then yeah. well let's go to the new testament the goodness of god leads to repentance romans 2 4 and we know that that the goodness of god leads to repentance see he shows his goodness to sinners people who have not earned goodness he gives them good that's why all of us were yeah. Well, we we hadn't earned goodness. He gave us goodness. And, and with that goodness, that is going to draw us close to the Father through Jesus Christ. It's about drawing us by his goodness, not by his harshness, not by his severity, mm -hmm. but it's by his goodness that he draws you into 
his presence. And that's the reason uh, we're talking about this tonight, because that's what he's doing. He's pouring out his goodness amen, amen. and he's drawing you into his presence. He, want to, he wants to commune amen. with you. He wants, he wants to, to feast with you. Ab and abide with you. Amen. Glory amen. To God. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're going to transition now to, to the feast. Uh, because this was in uh, the book of Leviticus, God established seven major feasts. And uh, there were four that they observed in the spring and three in the fall. And uh, I'll let Sherry read these uh, in a moment, but I just want to say the, the spring feast, it was all prophetic about Jesus Christ. And the fall feasts, are all prophetic about Jesus Christ. The spring was talking about his first coming, uh, about his crucifixion and about those things. But this, uh, the ones in the fall, the ones that we're celebrating right now, the, these are the dates that he has laid out for us. And this all is prophetic of the second coming of Jesus Christ. So I'm gonna let Sherry read. First, we'll go over the four in the spring. And then I'll just uh, comment about those. Okay, the spring feast are the Passover, the feast of unleavened bread, the offering of the first fruits, and the feast of weeks. Okay, so Jesus fulfilled these feasts. So you know, at Passover, he was crucified. Then uh, he was buried in the uh, feast of unleavened bread. So Unleavened bread mean that means that it has no leaven, and the leaven is a symbol of sin because sin will cause it to rise up. But this had no leaven in it, so he was crucified on Passover. He was buried on the feast of unleavened bread, and there was no sin in him, and so he came in there, and so there was nothing to cause mm -hmm. him to come up. Uh, but it was going to be by the by the Holy Spirit and the Father raised him up on the feast uh, of first fruits. Mm. And then he became the first uh, from the dead. He became the first from the dead, begotten from the dead. And he was first, but we're uh, maybe not second or third, but we're somewhere in that line. Mm -hmm. he, he's the first fruits and he's the first arisen from the dead, but we're, we're in that same line. Uh, so, and then uh, 50 days after that, uh, you had the uh, Pentecost. You mm -hmm. had the fe week, what is it called? Week the, the Feast of the Weeks. Feast of the Weeks. And that's when the Holy Spirit was poured out uh, after he left and after he was ascended. And, and so all of those four first feasts, the ones in the spring, Jesus fulfilled them when he came. And now there's going to be three that are mm -hmm. set aside for the autumn. That's the season that we're in. And these will uh, these are all prophetic of his second coming. And what are these feasts, Sherry? The Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, so the Feast of Trumpets was last Saturday and Sunday, uh, the 16th. My, 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 my trumpet. Oh, Sherry's going to get her trumpet now. 16 and 17. Uh, she's ready to play her trumpet. See, the trumpet uh, sounds uh, something important. Uh, the Israelites used the trumpet to uh, call an assembly, uh, to go out to war, to march out to war. Uh, and, and all of those are important things. So the trumpet is an important thing to God. And he is even trumpeting the Lord's return to the uh, when Jesus comes again, there's going to be a trumpet blast, and that's pretty exciting. Now, here comes Sherry. She's going to be trumpeting the goodness of God. Amen, amen. And that he's coming back. Hallelujah. 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 Trumpet is important. 
And one of the things it does is just trumpet the goodness of God. Amen. This, you know, uh, on Saturday morning, I was mm -hmm. awakened with uh, my wife blowing the trumpet uh, and proclaiming the goodness of God. Amen. Uh, that was her. That's what she was doing on mm -hmm. early Saturday morning. She had got up and went out there and <laughs> got her horn and uh, sat outside and uh, blew the trumpet. Mm-hmm celebrating the goodness of God. Amen. Okay. Amen. So we've got these three feasts and uh, one of them has just occurred, but now we're in that 10 day period of all, which it's a time to reflect on the, on the things that God has good done for us, mm -hmm. the goodness of God. And that's what we're talking about right now. We're talking about his goodness. We need to be reflecting on his goodness. And, and then we have the Day of Atonement. That's Monday. Uh, that's the uh, a feast. And, and uh, it, what happened in the Old Testament, they just covered over the blood of the uh, goats and the, and the bullocks and all mm. of those things. They just covered sin. Mm. Well, we live under the new covenant and our sins are not just covered mm. by animal blood, but it is forgiven yeah. by the blood of Jesus. Amen. So we're in a better dispensation uh, than they were. And so they were thankful. They had extravagant feasts uh, and the, all they had was the sin was covered for another year. And, uh, but ours mm -hmm. are forgiven. Uh, Hallelujah. forever Hallelujah. and our sins are removed as far as the east is from the west Amen. and that's an Amen. infinite of infinite distance and so we, we need to remember that and, and then the the final one is the feast the feast of tabernacles and that means that we're living with him uh we are his temple now he's in us uh the father and the son and the holy spirit you look at uh 1 Corinthians 6 and 2 Corinthians 6, you'll see that we are his tabernacle now. So we're tabernacling with, with the Lord. He is in us. And that's exciting. I, I mean, in the old covenant, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit would come upon people, but we have him always. He'll never He'll leave, leave us, us and never forsake us. And we abide with him. And you know what... Uh, uh, John 15 verse 7 says, if you abide with me, abide in me, and my words abide in you, uh, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be, be done. done for you. Uh, all you have to do is just ask. Oh, I need something. I need a glass of lemonade. Oh, I need something. Oh, I, I need some money. Oh, I need all you have to do is just ask if you abide with him. Uh, that a real yeah. critical ver word there is abide. Are we abiding with him and he is abiding with us? Well, that's the whole point of the feast is to spend time with the Lord. Now, well, oh, and, well I have okay. an example here. Okay. Remember when Jesus took Peter, James, and John up on the Mount of Transfiguration and he was transformed. Jesus was transformed uh, right there in front of him, right there in front of them. And what did Peter want to do? Peter wanted to build three shelters or three little tabernacles so that they could just abide in his presence. He didn't want to leave that place. And he was, uh, Peter was very much familiar with the feast. And the Feast of Tabernacles is where the presence of God is just there with you. And you just, like Freddie said, you, you live there. You abide there. And we can do that every single day of our lives. We can abide with him and he abides with us. We don't have to go to a special service. We don't have to go to a special place. Uh, we can just, we can just receive his very presence uh when you wake up in the morning receive his presence when you're eating your lunch receive his presence when you're eating your little chinese noodles you know receive his presence and and it's a it's a a, a spiritual thing peter wanted it to be a natural thing but it was a spiritual thing that's, uh, that's right today it is a spiritual thing now I want you to uh, think that most Christians 
uh, ignore the feast. They, they uh, pay no heed to it. They think that was something mm -hmm. uh, in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, and it has no relevance uh, for us today. But, but I want to I want you to look at these four verses uh, from Leviticus 23 that says these feasts will last forever. And uh, this is a... Uh, Leviticus 23. This is verse 14, verse 21, verse 31, and verse 41. They all say the same thing. It shall be a, a statue forever throughout your generations in all of your dwellings. Okay, so these feasts are going to go on forever. Yes. Forever and ever and, and ever. ever. And it's going to go on for eternity. There's, we're still going to have these feasts. And regardless of where you are, regardless of what generation you're in, they go on and on and on forever and ever and ever. And so that really got my attention. When I saw those four verses, hey, these are going to go on forever. And that's in eternity. They will be there. This, this, uh, uh, earth and sky, all of this is just going to fold up and uh, be done away with, but not the feast. The okay. feasts are going to go on and on forever and ever. So we better learn out, learn now what they mean. They mean that we're going to go into his presence. We're going to proclaim his goodness and think about his mm -hmm. goodness. And we're going to think about what he's done in our life, how the blood of Jesus has cleansed us out uh, of uh, He's forgiven our sins, and he's cleansed us from all unrighteousness. We need to remember these things. Mm -hmm. These are things we need to ponder, and that's what these feasts are about. Let's remember that our sins are forgiven, and let's uh, th proclaim the goodness of God, how God has been good to us, and it's all through Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's Amen. really exciting. Now, the Galatians, uh, they went back and they tried to keep doing exactly the way the feasts were laid out in the Old Testament. Uh, and that's not what we're supposed to do. Let's just read what uh, Paul wrote to the Galatians in Galatians 3, verses 1-3. We're, we're going to do the feasts forever and ever and ever, but we're not going to use blood animals mm -hmm. of blood the sacrifices it, it's just not going to happen it's not animal sacrifices it's going to be a new way of doing it in our dispensation and the mm -hmm. era and the time that we're living in so i want you to see how paul corrected the foolish galatians mm -hmm. because they tried to do the feasts they were very concerned about the appointed times and this is why uh, a lot of people, a lot of Christians look at this message into the Galatians and they say, well, the feasts are just not for us. But what he, they were trying to do the same old way, uh, celebrate the same, the feast, but they were trying to celebrate them as if Jesus had not gone to the cross. They were trying to, by their works, add something mm -hmm. to their salvation, add to Jesus. So Jesus wasn't enough. They had to add their works of celebrating the feast. Now that's wrong. That's an extreme measure. And mm -hmm. Paul gets on to them and he corrects them. So let's mm -hmm. read this here. Okay, this is Galatians chapter three, verses one through three. Oh, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. This is the only thing I want to find out from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being perfected or completed by the flesh. Okay, see, nothing you can do in your flesh can add to your salvation. Your salvation comes through Jesus Christ and only, only Jesus Christ, believing 
in what he did on the cross. That's where your salvation comes. And if you're trying to add works to it, that's what the Galatians were trying mm -hmm. to do. Even though they were celebrating the feast, they were trying to go back under the law with the feast. And that's mm -hmm. not at all what we're talking about here today. We're just talking about being in the presence of the Lord, that God himself set seven times out of the year, a set aside time to be with you. Now you can go and be with him anytime, but he has set these seven times apart because he wants to be with you during these appointed times. And, and so heaven is open wide in these appointed times. And so you can go into his presence and by proclaiming his goodness, see, you're going to be inviting his presence into, and his your, blessings. into your life and in, in your blessings. Hallelujah. Now, also, I want us to think that there's two extremes. And one extreme is to go back and do the feast the way they've always been done under the old covenant. That is an extreme. Paul said right there, that's not the thing to do. We cannot add anything to Jesus uh, for our salvation. Mm -hmm. It's all about Jesus. The other extreme is just to ignore the feast as if they're unimportant to us because we are Christians. We're living under the new covenant. But let's go back and look closely at what Jesus said in Matthew 17. And he's Matthew talking five. About Matthew 5, verse 17, and he's talking about the law. Did he come to destroy the law? No, he came to fulfill the law. We could also mm -hmm. substitute in there, did he come to destroy the feasts? No, he came to fulfill the feast. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Because a feast mm. were a part of the law. Mm, so that's good. when he says, uh, did I come to abolish or destroy the, the law? You could also think in your mind, did he come to destroy or abolish the feast? No, because the feasts are going to go on forever and ever and ever. Okay, read these mm -hmm. two ver mm -hmm. verses in Matthew 5, 7. Okay, please. this is out of the Passion Translation. If you think I've come to set aside the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets, you're mistaken. I have come to bring to completion or perfection all that has been written. Okay, and so it was about perfection. He's going to perfect it, mm -hmm. give us understanding of what the feasts are really about. He's going to give a perfection, bring per the feast into perfection. He didn't, uh, he didn't abolish the feast. He didn't do away with the feast. He just and it caused us to increase our understanding of what the feast were always intended to do. Okay, amen, read amen. the next. This is in uh, Matthew 5, 17 and 19, and this is out of the message uh, translation. Don't suppose for a minute that I have come to demolish the scriptures, either God's law or the prophets. I'm not here to demolish, but I'm here to complete. I am going to put it all together. I'm going to give you a vast panoramic view oh. or the big picture. Oh, I love this. Mm -hmm. See, he, he didn't come to do away with the feast. He just shows us a bigger picture of how the mm -hmm. feast fit in. Oh, hallelujah. God's law is more real and lasting than the stars in the heavens and the ground at your feet. Long after the stars are burned out and the earth wears out, God's law will still be alive and will still be working. Oh, Hallelujah. I would also say his feast will still be going Hallelujah. on. I mean, the stars can all burn out. The earth can be done away with, but the feasts are going to continue because they are part of the law. He didn't come to destroy it. He came to fulfill it to help us understand what God's intentions were all along. I want you to know that we are in the season of these high feet of high feasts. Mm -hmm. And there are three of them in the fall, and that's the time we're in. Well, we've already celebrated the uh feast of trumpets, trumpets. Trumpets. Now we're we're in the time of repentance, reflection on on the goodness of God and then we're going to 
go into what was the day of atonement but uh, for us it's when our sins are forgiven yes so for and us washed to, away to remember that our sins are forgiven forever they're not just covered mm -hmm. by the blood of an animal amen but the, amen a single drop of the blood of jesus see took care of all of your sins forever and ever and ever and then we go into the uh, feast of tabernacles and that runs from october the 30th to i mean oh, september. september the 30th to october the 6th so it, it's a time that we can abide with the lord and so that we're in a really important time it's a new year it's a new season new things that god wants to do Amen. and so how can we apply it in our lives let's think that there's some things that god had promised you that you haven't seen accomplished yet if that's so bring those up in mm -hmm. this time maybe he wants to uh resurrect some dreams that you've had Amen. maybe for Amen. your children Amen. maybe you've had dreams about where your children were headed and and maybe they're not there maybe they're not going there but this is the time to resurrect some things that were have been dead this is time of newness and and perhaps god wants to give you some new direction for your life, for the life of your children, for the life of the people around you, some newness. And, and so spend some time. And I suggest you spend some mm -hmm. time uh, daily uh, and through October the 6th. From now on, through October the 6th, spend some time fellowshipping with the Lord, talking about his goodness, remembering uh, the good things mm -hmm. that he has done in your life. Uh, even testifying to other people, oh, this is what God has mm -hmm. done right. in our life. God has done great things. I tell you, right before we started this uh, mm -hmm. uh, session tonight, we got a telephone call uh, from a young couple, and and they had had gone had gone through some difficult periods recently. But they were uh, they had called to tell how tell us how good God was, and that uh, mm -hmm. this young man was uh being offered a, a job that he was wanting and so he's been waiting for it and going through the interviewing process but they were so excited That's right. about the goodness of god and how god had been faithful uh to take them from where they were to where he is now and he sees a brighter future Hallelujah. because of the goodness of god and that that's mm -hmm. what we all need to be focusing on is just the goodness of god how good he is and you, i suggest if you want to to apply this message in your life that you spend some time every day between as you can between now and october the 6th thanking god for his goodness and also asking him questions about the new thing that he wants to do in your life Hallelujah. He, he's not satisfied where you are he wants you to go to our level he wants to bless you more and more uh even more than you could imagine god has Hallelujah. good things a good plan for each of you and for each of your family members for your spouse Hallelujah. for your children. children he's got good plans he wants to bring goodness into your life uh, but you've got to believe him for it. you've got to expect it so you could ignore anything about the feasts in this time period mm -hmm. but it's an important mm -hmm. time it's a new season and and you've approached the lord with that expectation that he's going to do something good for you hallelujah thank you for being hallelujah.